Hi everyone, it's Amanda, and today I'm gonna to be doing a bookshelf tour, and let's just get straight into it, but be sure to like and subscribe if you love romance books like me. So starting with this top shelf, this shelf is mostly contemporary romances or sports romances and we will get into this whole shelf. This here is Dan Humphrey from Gossip Girl. Then we have my B. Celeste collection. I absolutely love B. Celeste. I will do an author video on her one of these days, but if I had to pick one, I would pick Underneath the Sycamore Tree. It is an amazing emotional romance that has chronic illness representation and its stepbrother trope. It also made me cry for 20 minutes though, so beware. And then we have a grumpy sunshine by her, which I love, called Make You Miss Me. So underrated. Then we have Michaelia Smeltzer, Confidence of Wildflowers, and Sweet Dandelion. Sweet Dandelion is actually a therapist student trope. Then we have Dear Bridget, I Want You by Penelope Ward. Then we have all my Lauren Asher books, and I have the first two books in the Dreamland Billionaire series, and then the second and third in the Dirty Air series. I really need to buy Throttled so I can read this series and tell you guys how I feel about it, but I haven't read those yet. And then I have Christina C. Jones, The Culmination of Everything, Tell Me Pretty Lies, and Bad Habit by Charlie Rose. Ella Mazes to Love Jason Thorne, which I really want to read soon. And then we have Unconditional by QB Tyler. Candy Snyder's What He Doesn't Know. That one has cheating in it. I know that. Then we have Something the Way by Jessica Hawkins. That one is like an angsty romance between a sister and her sister's man. So it's complicated. I think that's what it's about. Then we have some mamma romance that Serena Bowen and Elle Kennedy wrote, and that's Hockey. And we have Beauty and the Baller by Elsa Madden Mills. That one is football and it's fake dating. And I'm hoping to read that in May. Then over here we have my Mariana Zapata collection. Absolutely love all of Mariana Zapata's books. I personally love From the Up with Love probably the most, but I love everything. It's hard to say all the books that I've read have at least been 3.5 stars by her, but I do love The Wall of Winnipeg and Me as well. I am pretty basic when it comes to my favorites for her. I know a lot of people love the same ones that I do. Culty is also really good. It's just, you can't go wrong if you love a slow burn. Then we have my L. Kennedy series, which is the Off Campus and Briar U series. I have mostly all of the Off Campus ones. What am I missing? I'm not sure what I'm missing. I forget. Is it the goal? It might be the goal, but um, that's my collection that I have. Moving down one shelf, this one is also contemporary romance, mostly indie published, except for my Colleen Hoover, some of them. So I obviously have my Colleen Hoover section and there's a couple books on top. My shelves are so stuffed that I have to like squeeze things in where I can. So Colleen Hoover, I have most of my faves but I don't own some of my faves. I have to like slowly get them because I've read them so many times on ebook. I just need to get all the physical copies, but I personally love Regretting You. I think it's underrated, but I also really love Heartbones. I have a special edition copy of Heartbones coming soon and I absolutely love that book. It has so many good lines. Then we have Lilac by B.B. Reed. I believe this one is a reverse harem rock star romance. Then we have my only Devney Perry books right here. And those are more suspense or mystery romances I believe and I think that they're in small towns as well. I haven't read those yet but I'm looking forward to it because everybody has been talking about Devney Perry recently. Then we have A Risk on Forever by N.S. Perkins. This is one of my favorite covers. It's so pretty. Just reminds me of vacation. I actually might take this on vacation next week. I'm not sure. Then we have From the Embers by Ali Martinez. This is another emotional romance. I think that a fire happens and they both lose their loved ones or they are together and they lose themselves. Something like that. It's a really heartbreaking romance and I'm excited to read it. Then we have my Corinne Michaels books. I have You Loved Me Once and A Chance for Us, which are both small town romances, I believe. I think this one's a little more emotional. Then we have The Cheat Cheat by Sarah Adams. This is such a good book, so underrated. Oh my God, it's fake dating and it's just so much fun. It doesn't have any steam in it, but I didn't mind because the story was so fun. Then we have Spanish Love Deception, Aaron Blackford Supremacy, Serenity Heartbreak, 
Dear Ava, and then I have Anna Huang's Twisted series. Marriage for One by Ella May is another really good grumpy sunshine book, and it is slow burn. And then of course we have another favorite author. We have Kennedy Ryan, which is just pure amazingness. Please read any of her books. I don't own Real, which honestly is blasphemy because I love that book so much and I think the second one's coming out this year and I'm so excited. Moving down one, this is when we get into more dark romance except for the Addicted series right here. I again run out of room very easily so this is just where they went and it's just it kind of goes because of the white so it fits but this is mostly dark romance on this section. Just a great overall shelf right here. So we start with Ammo Jones books which are all glorious. I personally love In Peace Lies Havoc but the best one in the whole entire series is In Silence She Screams. This book has such good smut let me tell you. Then we have one of my favorites Heartbreak Warfare. I sobbed like an absolute baby reading this book. It was heartbreaking and at first I was like not into it because it has some cheating in it where I was just like sad because she has a son but it was just so good. It's a military romance. Then we have Sav R. Miller, Promises in Pomegranate. Then we have my Emily McIntyre books, which are my absolute favorites. They're one of my absolute favorite series, especially Never After series, which is Hooked, Scarred, and then Wretched, which is my favorite one in the series. But the reason I actually started reading her books was because of the co-authored one that she has with Sav R. Miller, and that is Be Still My Heart. This book is so freaking good. It's suspense romance, it has a mystery, but it also has some really good steam. The plot is so good and it's set in this small town in Maine. You guys have to read this one. It is so underrated. I haven't seen anyone talking about it. Then we get into Jay Rose, which is another author that I really have been loving lately. I read these two books up here, Twisted Heathens and Sacrificial Sinners. This one's the first one, Twisted Heathens and it follows a reverse harem but it's very dark. It's set in an asylum and it's just done right. It is so good. Very dark but it's actually based on a prison study. Then we have Forever Ago which I did just get by her because I loved those two. So I'm excited to read one of her first books and that one is a sad romance. Then we have the Addicted series which I am in the middle of Ricochet and I really need to pick the series back up but I was really liking it. I think I rated the first one four stars. Then we have Deliver Us and From Evil by Pam Godwin. Can we just take a minute to see how good those look together? They are a bind up of her Deliver series. So each book is three books and it's a really dark romance, Capture Captive. Then we also have Sea of Ruin and Dark Note. Then we have Ecstasy by KV Rose, two of Gianna Darling's book. And then we have my Penelope Douglas. And of course we have two copies of Credence because it is one of my favorite romances of all time. I just love it. It is so good. But I also really love Falls Boys by them. It's also a favorite. I can't decide. I simply can't. I'd have to reread them again. <laughs> but it was really good too. But all of their books are good. Then we go down one more shelf and we have some of my other taboo slash dark paranormal romances. We have some Sierra Simone on the top there. And then we have Lucia Franco. We have Coralie June. Carrie Lake, that's more of a paranormal book. Monica James' Bad Saint, that one is a capture captive romance that's set on a boat and it was really fun. Tate James' Hate, Broken Bonds by Jay Bree. And then we have Apathy by L.K. Reed, some Kay Webster. And then Jessica Hawkins, that's her cartel series. And then Born Darkly, that one is a serial killer romance that a lot of people like or compare to There Are No Saints by Sophie Lark. Then we have Dangerous Temptation by Gianna Darling. And we have Find Me and Save Me by Ashley Rostek. These are actually in the wrong order. Find Me is the first one. And I freaking love this series. It is so good. It's a reverse harem suspense romance. And our main character is in the Witness Protection Program. And it is wild and so much fun. The next book comes out out really soon too. It's called Love Me. Then we have The Never King by Nikki St. Crow. The Cat and Mouse Duet by H.G. Carlton. Where There's a Will by Jesse Walker. That's a dark male male romance. Then we have The Girl in 6E which is erotic suspense I believe. Then over to the right we have my Nikki Salone collection, T.L. Swan, and also 
of course, the Raven Hood series on the bottom there. I absolutely love that series, and I haven't read any Tale of Swan yet. And the only Nikki Sloan one that I have read is The Pool Boy, but I rated that one three stars. I didn't love it. I don't like reverse age gap that much, but that was something I discovered recently. <laughs> Down here, we have a completely different shelf. This gets into my sci-fi collection. So obviously I do love Star Wars, as you can tell. Um, I have the Hunger Games series back there, the Illuminae Chronicles. We've got To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by the same author as Aragon. We have the Aurora Cycle, The Ones We're Meant to Find, Winter's Orbit, Red Rising, some Becky Chambers, Sleeping Giants, and then Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. And then one more down. This is my like nostalgic section. That's why it's on the bottom. We have, of course, the Mortal Instruments series, the Infernal Devices. We've got my paperbacks of Throne of Glass for some reason. I have the hardcovers in another area in my apartment, so I'll show you that in a second. But we also have Shiver and Linger, which are top tier top tier nostalgia. And then we have, of course, the Unbecoming of Mara Dyer and the Evolution of Mara Dyer and the Rene Adier Aladdin retelling type books. All right, so starting at the top here, we have my contemporary that goes into some darker stuff into mafia type reads. So we start with the QB Tyler's Taboo Romance. We've got One Hot Italian Summer by Karina Halley. We have some Morning Man, and those ones are contemporary with a little bit of sadness in them. Then we have three books in the Britney C. Cherry Element series, and these are so pretty. I just got these, and they're so stunning. They all have marble type covers. Then we have A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime by Monica Murphy. That's a bully romance, and I'm currently reading the one that comes before it, Things I Wanted to Say But Never Did. And it is so good. It's what we want in a bully romance. It's at a prep school. It's everything. I am truly living. <laughs> then we have Carrie and Cole, No Tomorrow and Don't Kiss the Bride. Those ones are also contemporary. Mia Asher's Arson. That one has cheating involved. The Words by Ashley Jade. That one's a second chance. Rockstar Romance. Stay With Me by Nicole Fiorina. That one is taking place in, I think, a therapist setting, and it's a little bit of a darker contemporary. Same with Darling Venom. That one also has some darker topics. And then next to it, we also have some sports romances, Pucked and the Hookup. Those are hockey and football. And then the two Jade Wests, Hello Stranger and Bait. Bait is a CNC, very smutty book. And then Hello Stranger is more of a sad contemporary. Then we have The Thorns Remain, which is Jennifer Hartman's latest release. The Predator by Runix, The Boy in His Ribbon. Jen Darling's Evolution of Sin trilogy. My favorite paranormal romance by Nicole Fiorina. Oh my god, Hollow Heathens. So good. Loved it. I can't wait for the second book to come out in the fall. Then we have Bound by Honor by Cora Riley, which gets into the mafia. And then Sophie Lark's books and I am collecting them slowly. Moving down we have more fantasy type romance so we have Katara here and we have some good fantasy romances. The Bridge Kingdom, so good. Trader Queen's the second book. We have Deal with the Elf King and the Companion novel. Then we have some Katie Robert right here, some monster romance. Yes, Rooksgrave Manor is the smuttiest monster romance book that I've read to date. Love it. Then we have Touch of Darkness, Rhapsodic, King of Battle and Blood, Savage Lands, Guild, Black Sunshine, Wicked by JLA, White Hot Kiss, Pestilence. We have some vampires, some mermaids in here. We've got Vikings. We've got dragons. We've got Ice Planet Barbarians. We've got aliens. We have monsters. We have water worlds all very fun. And then getting towards the end, we get into some of my favorites, which are, of course, Holly Black. Amazing. 10 out of 10. This is Jude and Carden right here. So good. Then we have Book of Night, which I just read, and I will talk about that in a recent reads really soon, but it was so good. Shadow Magic. Amazing romance. I loved it so much. Then on this shelf we have more fantasy and YA fantasies. We have my TJ Klune. We have the Raven King series, Fable and Namesake, Aiden Thomas books, and then another Holly Black on the top there. Then we have my Ember in the Ashes series, which is the Fairy Loot Editions, which are so, so pretty. Those are my favorite series as a teenager. And then we have Down Comes the Night and A Far Wilder Magic by Allison Sapp. And then we have my Labor Dugo in the right hand corner. This candle is Kieran from, from Blood and Ash. 
and I have a lot of Rumblet and Ash candles, as you can tell. <laughs> Moving down one more, it gets into some adult fantasy, and this is where I had a run out of room, of course. <laughs> We have The Host by Stephanie Meyer, which is very well loved. I have read that book at least seven times. It is the ultimate love triangle. Vicious and Vengeful are on the top by the Schwab along with the Alice Six. Then we have The Mask of Mirrors and The Year of the Witching. And then I just got In a Garden Burning Gold by Rory Power. Can't wait to read that one when I'm in a fantasy mood. The Starless Sea is one of my favorite adult fantasy books. So good. Lovely War is just randomly there. I don't normally read historical fiction, but that one is so good. The audiobook is amazing. Then we have Small Favors and House of Salt and Sorrow. That is a YA fantasy. Erin A. Craig is one of my favorites. She does like really good atmosphere in her books and I would recommend both of those. Then we have Nevernight. We have the Bear and the Nightingale trilogy by Catherine Arden. That one's set in a Russian inspired world. Then we have The Diviners on top there along with This Woven Kingdom by Tahira Mafi. Then The Song of Achilles, The Night Circus, Foundry Side, and then all of Naomi Novik's books, Uprooted, Spitting Silver, and Deadly Education. Then we move down one and we have some more YA fantasy and fantasy books. That top one with the flowers is Kingdom of the Wicked and I've heard really bad things about it but I can't get rid of this copy because it's so pretty. And then the ninth house we have some Margaret Owen books. Sing Me Forgotten is a fan of the opera retelling. Skin of the Sea is one of my favorites. It's an adventure based in West African folklore and it's set in the sea and on the sea and it's really good. Then we have Keeper of the Night, Iron Widow, and Wicked Deep and Winterwood on the top there. We have some more sea books like Daughter of the Pirate King, Daughter of the Siren Queen. There's even more actually. To Kill a Kingdom is also a mermaid and this mug is also To Kill a Kingdom inspired. So this shelf has a lot of watery, piratey type vibes. This one has the Sight series, the Curse Breaker trilogy. We've got the Scorpio races. We've got some more Bridget Kemmerer, Children of Blood and Bone, Caravel, Lore, Gilded Wolves, Legendborn. And of course we have Twilight as well. And then randomly I just have Crave sitting there. <laughs> I think I put it there just because it has similar vibes to the covers of Twilight. Then we have this shelf over here which is mostly traditionally published romance. And then the right side is like random YA. So on the top we have my Polaroid camera and then I just keep my recently bought traditionally published books on top here and some of them aren't even traditionally published i just had no room left these are the books that i've bought recently i'm displaying delilah green doesn't care because mm, obviously i freaking love that book it's so good please read it then right here we have my special copies of the hoop series which i'm obsessed with and then just a card from ryan all right so in this first cube i have his quotient series the danny brown series or not the danny brown the brown sisters series which i love so much and then we have my tessa bailey my helena hunting that's traditionally published float plan and if the shoe fits and then my mom's actually borrowing it happened one summer but hook line and singers up there and then i have this random book because i didn't know where to put it it's edenbrook this one chandler recommends a lot and i just got it used but i don't know where to put it so i just throw it up there i never said i was aesthetic then the second one i have some suspense romance on the top with whiteout and the intended victim and then I have some kind of older books. I have One Day in December, You Deserve Each Other, Written in the Stars, The Unhoneymooners, Twice Shy, People We Meet on Vacation, Shipped, and then the K.A. Tucker Simple Wild series. Then I have Beach Read, Getaway Girl by Tessa Bailey, and then The Soulmate Equation, which is hardcover and it annoys me. I hate when romance books are hardcover. I just like, unless it's a special edition, I don't want it. I don't know why they're doing that now. My camera stopped recording voice, but here's is the last one of the romance book cubes <laughs> then we have this shelf over here this has my mystic box copies and i'm obsessed with these i love the no tomorrow by carrie and cole cover it's so stunning and then the stenciled edges this one is sick fucks and i'm obsessed with it and i love that book so definitely recommend for a really really dark romance this one is torn by carrie and cole and then this one is it ain't me babe by tilly cole
Moving down, we have my Court of Thorns and Roses series with a couple candles. Moving down, we have some manga and my favorite graphic novel ever, Laura Olympus. I have this box here because I love The Little Prince. And then this is from Crescent City. But I just keep my bookmarks in it. And this is actually Poppy and Hawk. And this is a Little Prince one by Christine from the Ruby's Digest. Then we have more graphic novels. I have Heartstopper, obviously. I haven't watched the show yet, but I really, really need to. And then I have my horror ones and just a couple other ones in here. And then we have my Stranger Things Funko right there. Then down here, I just have some thrillers that I don't keep on my shelf because I don't have a lot of thrillers, so I keep them over here. And I just have a lot of Grady Hendrix, some Ruth Ware. My mom is borrowing some of these, so it's not my full thriller collection, but it's the general gist. And then we have the Plague Doctor right down there as well. This just has a Thorn of Glass series and then Crescent City. Over here we have a poppy candle which goes with the bottom shelf here. And then we have my Disney World photo of me and my best friend next to Ryan's one year anniversary gift to me from 2017. Moving down we have my From Blood and Ash series with another Winter in Atlantia candle and hawk. I'm kind of obsessed with them. <laughs> and then that's me and Ryan in the back at a semi-formal. Then we have my Outlander series and my plant Inej. <laughs> so that's the wall shelf. I love looking at this when I walk in. All right, so that completes today's bookshelf tour. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like this video and subscribe down below for more content from me and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.